I am a fossil hunter based on the Yorkshire coast in England. I spend many hours each week scouring the local beaches looking for these epic fossils. I then take them home and prepare them using my special fossil preparation tools. It's incredible to see the difference from when we find these fossils on the beach to once they've been prepared. Sit back and enjoy because I'll be showing you a bunch of my epic Jurassic finds. While searching this fresh little cliff fall, I spotted this nodule, a really nice rounded shape. After giving it a few taps off camera, I spotted the edge of an ammonite protruding out. A few gentle but well placed hammer taps caused this fracture to run all the way alongside the edge of the nodule. Inside there was this beautiful, rare, low Elias ammonite. Roughly, this fossil inside is 200 million years old. After taking it back home and preparing it using my air tools, it looks absolutely stunning. One summer's day, quite a few years ago, at low water, I picked up this rock, which looked a little bit different to the others, and inside there was this amazing fossilised fish. Check out the jet black scales. Fossilised fish remains like this are one of the most sought after Jurassic fossils on the Yorkshire coast. Inside this rounded pebble is quite a well-preserved ammonite. The species is called a catecholoceros and it's a really chunky example. Here it is after I cleaned it up back at home. It's one of my best examples yet. Here's a mega chunky Jurassic squid fossil I found wearing out of a loose shell slab on the beach, a well placed chisel and a tap with my hammer should quickly loosen it from the very soft shale. The sea can quickly destroy these ancient fossils if they're not saved in time. Contained within this nodule are not one but two beautiful, quite large Dactylioceros tenucostatum example. This was found within a nodule far out at low tide one winter's day and I prepared it out using my air tools. I was lucky enough to get such a nice finish on this example. A few months ago I spotted this nodule with a Peronoceros ammonite on the inside. This is a species with little nodes or spines protruding out. You can see a few of them in this shot here. After some careful preparation work, here it is. This species of ammonite can be notoriously difficult to prep. If you'd like to support the channel while at the same time obtaining a beautiful fossil from the Yorkshire coast, please check out my website called buyafossil.com. There's a bunch of beautiful prepared fossils available for purchase, all with shipping to most countries. Thank you. Here's an eroded but quite rare little ammonite I found on the beach yesterday. I'm going to show you how I clean it up using my air tools. I'm blasting away all of the matrix that's in between the ammonite whirls. You can see it slowly appearing to melt away there and here it is. Now let's have a look at one that wasn't as eroded when I found it. I removed a lot of the rock using my air tools and then abraded the ammonite reveal the lovely middle. After making my way through the wildly overgrown footpath I spotted this Jurassic shell stuck out of a large shell slab. Using my chisel I start to remove it. I want to see how well it is preserved on the other side. This shale is nice and soft so it should pop out beautifully and there we go. This is a 180 million year old Jurassic shell recovered off the beach. Here's a beautiful Dactylioceros I was lucky enough to find and prepare on one of my local beaches. I'm particularly fond of this special little fossil ammonite piece because of the finish I was able to achieve on the matrix. 
the nodule itself had a really high presence of pyrite but I managed to prepare it out nice, it wasn't sticky at all. Sometimes you're in the right place at the right time. Imagine my surprise when walking onto a relatively unproductive beach. I spotted this incredible Jurassic ammonite laying amongst a shingle on the beach. It's a pretty rare ammonite. It's actually a little bit older than the usual ones I find on this channel. Taking it back home, I start to remove quite a lot of the rock from the middle of the ammonite. And here it is after a few hours of preparation work. I think it's cleaned up beautifully, hopefully you all agree. A nice rounded nodule washed up amongst the boulders at low tide on my local beach. A few taps quickly revealed the keel of an ammonite fossil from the Jurassic. Quite a satisfying split here. The ammonite is a Hildoceros species. Let's prepare it using my air tools. It's a very pyrotized rock, so I'm using my strongest air pen to remove the rock from the ammonite. I'm going to speed it up so you don't have to watch through 20 minutes of me prepping out the ammonite. After giving it a coat of beeswax and then a brush with a shoe brush, it looks fantastic. A beautiful Jurassic example. A vertebra from a Jurassic crocodile. It's not very often you find crocodile remains on the Yorkshire coast and I was very lucky to find this one before the sea had done too much damage to it. It was simply rolling around amongst the beach shingle. Today I found this Jurassic aged fossil find washed up on a remote pebbly beach. All of the preparation work has been done by Mother Nature. A quick wash off in a nearby natural waterfall makes the ammonite details show out beautifully. This is one of the largest of this ammonite species that I've found on my local beaches. The species is Dactyloceros tenucostatum and while it doesn't look too big, once you pick it up and compare it to other found specimens, I think you'll agree it's quite a large size. I've definitely not found one much bigger. I got very lucky this week to find this beautiful fossil on the beach. It's a fossilised flipper or paddle from a Jurassic ichthyosaur sea creature. This fresh slab of shale had fallen from the cliffs overnight. You can see there's an ammonite in the very middle of it. It looks like it'll drop out. So using my chisel, I persuade the yeah. ammonite inside. Looks like a very good quality one. So I'm looking forward to preparing it. Once back home, I get to work at preparing the ammonite using a variety of different fossil preparation tools. It's quite a sticky ammonite to prepare, meaning that the rock doesn't separate from the ammonite very well. But I think it turned out quite nice. My friend got very lucky recently on the beach when he found this rare plesiosaur vertebra. It still had a very thin layer of shale on the beach so he asked me if I could clean it up and I said yes because it's a fun little job to do. The air abrasive powder shoots out of the pen and gets it nice and crisp looking. It removes the thin layer of shale. And here it is finished. I think it looks fantastic now after all of the shale has been removed and it's just down to the bone. Here's a quick video of the vertebra prepared today sat with all of my plesiosaur bones. These are a very rare find for the Yorkshire coast. You don't find many plesiosaur bones at all. Check out this nodule sticking out of a huge fallen shale slab on the beach. Using my hammer and chisel, I carefully extract the nodule. It looks like it's got a really well preserved ammonite on the inside. I need to take this one home to prepare it using my air tools and remove all of the shale. Found on the beach inside a pyritic nodule, I was very happy to see these beautiful ichthyosaur verts protruding from the outside. I had to remove the matrix using my air pens and it took me many hours but I'm very pleased with the results. Three 
articulated ichthyosaur vertebra with the neural processes still attached. There was quite a few ribs, but they were too brittle to keep. This ichthyosaur paddle digit or flipper bone shows incredible detail. It was preserved inside a layer of very thin shale, which I managed to air abrade straight off. When I split this rock, I couldn't believe how many Arneoceros ammonites were contained within. These are a much older species to the ones I've found mostly in this video. Here's a huge fossilized vertebra belonging to an ancient sea marine reptile called an ichthyosaur. This amazing creature was around in the Jurassic period. There's still quite a bit of matrix covering the very center of the vertebra. So using my air tools, I start to expose it. Now the matrix has been removed using my air pens. I apply some finishing touches using air abrasives. And then I apply a coat of paraloid that seals and protects the bone. It's now ready for display and looks absolutely fantastic. Here's quite an incredible but very fragile fossil. It's actually a lobster claw. My friend did the preparation work on this one for me. I think it would have taken a lot of patience. The amount of pink modern day sea life on the outside of this nodule tells us that it's been rolling around for quite a while. On the inside, I was shocked to see so many of these beautiful Elegantiserous ammonites contained within. This is a truly incredible specimen. It's amazing how many ammonites can be washed up inside one pebble. When originally found, I could only see the edge of the large ammonite. After further exploratory preparation, it revealed two more. These are rare ammonites from the Lower Lias and are roughly 200 million years old. While heading back after a rather unproductive fossil hunt, I was shocked to look down and see this mega ichthyosaur bone block. This block contains a number of vertebra, neural arches and ribs. There's also a lot of interesting bones on the back. After further preparation, check out how it looked. This incredible Jurassic bone block is almost 3D like in its appearance. This must have been a small section of a much larger bone block, so who knows where the rest of this fossil is. Maybe one day I'll find some more of it. Here's an Elegantiserous species of ammonite inside a pyrite crusted nodule. I prepared the ammonite out of the rock somewhat and then I gave a polish to the outer pyrite to give it this lovely shine. The prep work and the polishing took me many hours but I'm really glad I did it. It was a very messy job. How many ammonites can you count from this one particular block? It's absolutely packed with Gramoceros ammonites. You don't find many ammonite blocks this packed together. While this is just a common Dactylioceros ammonite, the outer world contains beautiful iridescent colours. It's rare to find colours like this preserved on the ammonites. 